This is The Chris Abraham Show. Season 4, Episode 20, Bente. Uh, my name's Chris Abraham. This is The Chris Abraham Show, and I'm happy to be here. Uh, I think the French word for 20 is vin, maybe. Anyway, today is about slow rowing, and I thought I'd give you an update on my slow rowing, even though I'm only three days in. I am so excited about this, and I will tell you more. But in short, in celebration of it, I bought an extended moleskin. I'll tell you all about it afterwards, but it's going well, and I'm really excited about it, and I can do it. And it's extremely slow. I go real slow, and I will walk you through why I do it, why I think it's useful, why I think it's valuable, and other resources that you can use. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for coming back. I hope nobody listens so that I can be open and boring and banal, uh, banal, and uh, just talk story with all y'all about the most inane uh, things in my life. Because I was told by someone that I'm funny, which I don't believe, but I also was told by someone that uh, chasing political intrigue is also uh, controversial and boring and dull and hackneyed, and they really don't want to see this become Chris Abraham's Twitter feed. All right, see you in a second. Uh, Bente? Vin? Hey, Google, what's German for 20? No. Svansig. Svansig. I always had trouble with the ch, like milch, 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 van, um, uh, richtig. Anyway, see you in a second. Ciao. Oh, thank you. Welcome back to Season 4, Episode 20. My name is Chris Abraham. This is the Chris Abraham Show. And this is all about following up more information from my world of slow rowing. All right, so first of all, I've had a Model C Concept 2 since, um, let's say... 2000, 2000, maybe, maybe earlier, maybe later, could be 2003, 2002. It was in the apartment that I got in 1998 in D.C. When I moved away from D.C., it uh, went to my buddy, uh, Scott Burns. I gave it to him because I left to move to Berlin in uh, 2007, 2008. And then I, w- I didn't have a Concept 2 until I moved to uh, Portland in 2011. 
And in 2011, I bought one uh, from uh, off of Craigslist from someone in, is it Vancouver, Washington? Is that right? Victoria, Washington? I think it's Vancouver, Washington, across the bridge. And I have the same one, and I've been upgrading it, and I have it all the way up to a PM5, which is the latest version. So it's at least from before 2011, and it's beautifully kept. Uh, the people I bought it from uh, kept it under a tarp, and, and it's just gorgeous, but it doesn't look anything like the new Model uh, D and Model E, the... Uh, the handle looks like an ad adapted handle off of the end of a uh, Sculler's uh, oar. And um, I have adapted it by adding one, two, three, four, five of the, uh, I guess they're sticker seats, the... the they're on sale at Concept2 Shop. They are um, adhesive foam seats. And for whatever reason, I have ended I end up having uh, five of them up one top of the other. And that's because that at some point I was going for really long rows. Because I was part of a Concept2 uh, challenge team where we basically spent hours and hours and hours on the seat and while other people I know um, would get bubble wrap or something else to uh, soften the abuse to their bottom and coccyx 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 uh, their tailbone I went for extreme uh, layers of cushion I also have something called I think it's called the Concept 2 fan or whatever, and it's this windsock, this nylon windsock that wraps around the, um, the, uh, I would say the fan of the Concept 2 rowing ergometer slash erg slash indoor rower, and it, um, it blows air in my face, so... Sometimes it can get hot, you know, when you're working out and it's nice to have wind blowing in your face, which is ironically never when you're on the river, never where you'd get air in your face because you're going forwards, backwards, if you know what I mean. And uh, as I have an upgraded PM5, it can handle a USB drive and it also handles Bluetooth. So I have a dedicated, old-school Apple iTouch, which lives on the machine via some sort of silicone phone holder on the top, and that has a app on it called Erg Data, E-R-G-D-A-T-A, -A, and then hanging from the yellow silicon um, phone carrier that I have on top of the PM5, is a Polar H10 heart rate monitor. So, that's everything. Right to the right of it um, are a couple of those <clears throat> ubiquitous IKEA bookshelves on their side. I uh, had a fancy couple uh, friends who are interior designers plan that for me. It fits perfectly across the entire... Um, I guess, media center, and on top of that is a very old, circa 2011, uh, Sony um, LCD TV, like flat screen TV. It's super old. I think it's only, I don't know, but it's on one of those swivel bases, so I can swivel it back and forth. It's not attached to the wall, and I like it that way. Um, maybe one day I'll get one of those phenomenally big HD TVs, but this is just a 1080p kind of one. Really simple, really basic. It's called a Bravia. Uh, I have on top of that, using double face tape, I have the sound bar from Roku, and it's set upside down so it can be glued or, if you will, taped 
to the top of the television. So my sound bar is also my Roku. And sitting on top of that, I have a Superman figurine and a Doctor, uh, Doctor Who um, figurine. The, 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 the first one of the reboot named Chris something. Anyway, so, painting the picture. Uh, what I do is I have the Concept 2 angled towards the TV, and then I have the TV angled towards me, and in my Google Calendar, every night at uh, between 6.30 and 7.30, I get on the machine, and I slow row uh, for between 60 and 90 minutes. I promised myself that I would I would row at least 60 minutes every single day, but as I become stronger, I want to row however long whatever movie I decide to watch is. So that could be from 90 minutes to 2 hours to 2 and a half hours. I think that is appropriate because it's very disruptive to watch a movie halfway and then to watch it the next day. However, that's possible too. But in a perfect world, I would love to be able to go up there and go tra-la-la for two hours without caring about it, without missing the time, uh, instead of sitting around watching TV. And if I really want it to be an hour or 40 minutes, I can always watch one of those television dramas that end up being, with all their uh, commercials removed, uh, they're 40 minutes, but if I watch them on YouTube TV, uh, they've got all the commercials. So usually it, you know, is an entire uh, hour. So, and I got to tell you, when I'm talking slow row, uh, here's just the last three days. Um, like I said, I'm only three days in. Uh, on October 1st, I went uh, 9,566 meters. And it took me an hour, and my pace was 3 minutes and 8 seconds, 0.4, for 500 meters. Now, for those of you who row, uh, that's appalling, right? Like, nobody goes under 250, and uh, most people are trying to do, you know, 150 or uh, 130, or those kinds of scores. So that ended up giving, because of, because of my, uh, uh, well, according to the concept two, which doesn't know what my weight is, um, it gave me 475, burnt, it bur burnt 475 calories, and my heart rate was an average of 97. Um, my notes were first row, and I watched Mona Lisa and the Red Moon, which, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's freaking awesome. So good. It's a 2021 film, and it's um, magical realist. It's paranormal. It's really good. It's really interesting. And uh, nobody dies. Nobody nobody kills anybody. Like, it's uh, there's violence, but... And there's little kids in it, and it's just a... Kate Hudson's in it. All right, Kate Hudson plays a, a New Orleans stripper in it, so you have to watch. Now, the 2nd October, I don't know what was up with me, but I only did 40 minutes. I know. I had a niggling lower back pain, and so I'm like, whatever, 40 minutes is good. Just don't break your record. Don't break every day, just so... I only went 6,910 meters, but uh, for 40 minutes and 2 seconds. And my pace was faster at 2 minutes 53.8. And I burnt 356 calories, and uh, my average heart weight was 93. So it's really slow, right? I'm not even breaking 100 uh, beats per minute. Uh, the notes are, I had some back pain, a pinched nerve that I think was constipation related I only went for 40 minutes and I almost fell off my sliding seat because I was watching wrongfully accused with Leslie Nielsen so funny it's a 1998 film 
extremely hilarious, and I thought I had seen all of Leslie Nielsen's uh, derivations of Airplane, but, like, you know, his spy one, and his this one, and his that one, I'd never seen that one, and it's freaking, I mean, I was laughing off the seat, it was, I mean, I didn't fall off, obviously, but I was, anybody in another apartment probably thought I was in a spirited conversation with a human being, uh, I was so, um, I didn't chuckle, I didn't laugh inside, I literally could not stop myself from laughing. And then there's, last night, I went for an hour again, 9,685 meters, my pace was 3 uh, minutes and 5 seconds per 500 for 488 calories, and my heart rate was an average of 97. And I watched Bringing Down the House uh, with, um, uh, Queen Latifah and, uh, Steve Martin, and it's either the best movie or the most offensive movie ever made. Uh, that was made on March 7th, 2003, which means that, I know we talk about the 90s being a time of inappropriate movies, but, you know, I bet you black folks really love this movie. I just, I bet you it makes white liberal ladies crazy. But I bet you, like, I bet you it's just, like, legitimately a funny movie. And it it goes for every racial stereotype. And then Queen Latifah breaks it, right? She breaks the stereotype. So Steve Martin says everything that's ever been in any, like, middle-aged white guy's mind. And she addresses it. I mean, it's a really smart it's 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 woke, it's proto woke in a based way. And then that's it. I'm up to date. So if you wonder, oh, and what's the value of doing it so slowly? Well, let me tell you, it uh, is like I said in another episode. It moves your breath. It moves your body. It extends uh, your joints. It um, it helps your I I I believe it helps your uh, your digestive system and I I believe it moves your lymph uh, lymphatic system moves your lymph uh, whatever lymph is Hey Google what is lymph system, a system composed of lymph vessels and intervening lymph nodes whose function, like the venous system, is to return fluid from the tissues to the central circulation. I think it's good for the vagus nerve. I believe it's good for blood flow. I believe it's good for uh, oxygenation of the blood. And I believe that it does very low key. I don't even know if I'm using low key right, so some young and tell me. I believe it does low key conditioning so that your and, and I believe since um you know 10,000 hours makes you good at anything, I believe that it also starts to build muscle memory on uh the movement so that the movement gets easier. I believe that um as the movements get easier, I will slowly um, become more efficient a machine, which is why I have this Moleskine logbook, which has 400 pages. Each page I have in my big scrawled handwriting a, uh, a log, and it's only on one page, like the right page. I waste the left page because I assume at some point I'm going to run and walk and so forth, and I want to put the other exercises onto the left page when I do them. Um, but the right page is only for erging. Uh, or if I get back onto the river, uh, uh, rowing. And uh, I want to see over time as I do the hour. And what I'm going to do as well is if I do 90 minutes or 2 hours, uh, the, um, uh, the Google, sorry, the Concept 2 logbook breaks, and also um, Strava, breaks down um, um, everything into, is it 5 or 10 minute increments? 
I think it's 10 minute increments. I think there's splits. And I think based on the splits, I can always get uh, what my time is for an hour. So I can continue going above an hour and still get the splits for an hour. And I'm going to note that in the book so that I can constantly track to see what the number of meters that I accrue uh, in the course of 60 minutes. And then I'm going to see over time whether that just naturally starts to increase, whether or not I break the 10,000 meter mark in an hour and how much I break that by. And by day 400, whether or not I am above 10,000 meters per every 60 minutes, uh, whether I'm up to 12,000 meters, 13, 14, 15,000 meters, 20,000 meters, etc. So I don't have any goal. I don't have any uh, attachment to outcome. If I end up doing 10,000 meters a day forever by doing 60 minutes a day, I'll be okay with that. I'm still going to lose. I'm still burning an extra five or 600 calories a day. I'm still moving for an hour out of 24. And um, I'm still getting the primary and secondary benefits of that uh, of that hour a day exercise. Um, once I diagnose whether or not my embarrassed admission that I had, con I was, I had constipation. I have to say that in terms of the erging, I believe that that's good for the digestive tract. I believe that if you have a problem with constipation or something like that, I believe treating your body like a human accordion and doing that for an hour every day couldn't hurt the dige digestive tract. Um, I will let you know if I evolve into um, uh, stretching before and after, but for now, it's such low intensity that, that I don't really feel the need for that. And uh, please, if you have any questions, I don't know what else I am uh, doing with regards to this. Although, I must tell you that every row I do that goes into the PM5 and then goes into the iPod Touch gets synchronized with the um, Concept2 logbook, which is log.concept2.com, and then is shared with Strava, and I believe Strava shares it maybe with Garmin. I don't know, but I definitely know that um, Concept2 and Strava are, are kissing cousins. So when you record something to Strava from Concept2, you actually get a generated screenshot of your PM5 uh, screen. So you can see your splits on Strava which I find extremely useful. And plus, there's a bunch of other stuff, like, um, uh, I can tell you. So, what, uh, like I said, um, on the logbook, it tells you the distance, time, pace, cals, and heart rate. It also gives you the splits. But on Strava, last night's, uh, last night's, Row said that I went 9,685 meters at a pace of 305 at a time of one hour. It says, congratulations, this activity is your longest row on Strava. And then I click on that, and it tells me more things. It says, uh, my moving time was an hour. Calories were 488. My average heart rate was 97 beats per minute. And then it gives me my power, which was 91 watts. It says my relative uh, effort was higher than average. And then it, um, it gives me a workout analysis, which are the different laps. So each, minute, each, each, each split is five minutes. So I know that each five minutes, which makes sense, um, um, tells me how many meters I did in five minutes. And it tells me what my split is in terms of, uh, of pace. And then I can look at that to explore the details. Tells me my relative effort is 9. 
uh, and uh, the analysis that it's giving me is that uh, my heart rate, max heart rate, was 104 beats per minute, and I was in uh, zone 1 for 100% of the time. So I never even made it to zone 2. It said that I did 329 kilojoules of work. My max power was 1190 watts. My, av my weighted average power was 158 watts. My training load was 62 and my intensity was 79. So I'll be able to track that as well. And I'm going to be posting uh, exports of these things onto my blog, uh, chrisabraham.com slash blog, when I get some more, like when I get 10 or so rows, I'll try to do an analysis on my blog and maybe another extremely boring share here. But I recommend you do it. Um, to be honest, like compared to Peloton, a Concept 2 Model D new is, I think, between $900 and $1,100. And I think that, oh, by the way, the background noise is my pet crow. Uh, I started feeding crows out there, and now they feel extremely entitled to food. So um, I don't want to piss off a murder of crows. And he never quite became my familiar. In fact, I'm pretty sure I became the crow's familiar instead. Uh, but, um, yeah, I, uh, I lost track of what I was just saying. But I'm going to keep track of this log. I'm going to keep track in Strava and on Concept2 log. And I am going to also let you know, uh, as of today... I know that uh, I've in, in the recorded lifetime of this uh, of my tracking my rows. I've done two million five hundred forty-five thousand one hundred ninety-two lifetime meters, which really isn't that many. It's more than some, but not as many as others. I'm currently participating in the fall team challenge, which ends on October fifteenth. But, like I said, I didn't start until October 1st, so I missed half the uh, challenge. And I'm rowing for Potomac Boat Club, so hopefully they don't uh, despise me for um, underperforming. Anyway, I'll come back uh, in a moment with some information on how to contact me. I would love to know what you think of this. Of course, you might be using this just to put yourself to sleep at the end of the night, considering how boring it is. I don't know why any of my funny humor doesn't come across in any of my podcasts. I really don't think, people, that I'm funny. I think that you might just like me as a person, and when you like someone as a person, in person, have a relationship with them, have some chemistry, then I think you just think I'm funny. And that's the best compliment that I can ever receive from anybody. Talk to you soon. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is Season 4, Episode 20 of The Chris Abraham Show, formerly known as Chris Cast. My name is Chris Abraham, and you can reach me at, uh, if you go on to log.concept2.com and search for Chris Abraham, you'll find me there. Maybe if you just type in Chris Abraham Concept 2 Log on Google, it might come up. You can find me, you can email me at chris at abraham.su. You can text me, signal me, telegram me, or WhatsApp me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. You can reach me at twitter.com slash chrisabraham, instagram.com slash chrisabraham, facebook.com slash chrisabraham, youtube.com slash chrisabraham, uh, noagendasocial.com slash at sign Chris, gearvic.su dot, uh, slash at sign Chris. 
Uh, Chris-Abraham.com is my Tumblr. And ChrisAbraham.com is my website. And ChrisAbraham.com slash blog is my blog. I believe that I have a abandoned, basically, um, what are they called? Uh, sort of like... Uh, Como de uh, squ- no, whatever that trendy blogging platform du jour is. I've got those out there, but I'm really not blogging these days. I'm doing this thing, which is um, about as uh, as popular as a as a sack of bricks or one of my fancy bag full of bricks, bags full of bricks, and. Uh, that's it. I'd be really happy to hear what you think. And I really encourage you to get a Concept 2. Like I said, it's uh, between 900 and 1100 If you go onto uh, Facebook Marketplace or um, Craigslist or something, uh, people are constantly selling off their Concept 2s the moment that uh, the economy goes south and they think they want to make some quick money. So maybe you can benefit from their loss by scoring a concept two for three, four, five, six hundred dollars. I think that there's a tipping point where they've become ubiquitous, and I think it's as easy to get a used concept two in the secondary market as it is to get a used uh, spin bike or um, or a uh, uh, stationary bike uh, because. You know, clubs are opening and then they're closing. Gyms are opening and they're closing. People join um, CrossFit and they buy an air bike and a Concept 2 and then they quit and get fat again. And they want to realize that you can actually make most of the money back that you um, bought the Concept 2. Even 10 years later, you can make most of your money back. So I encourage you to buy one. And... Only buy the Concept 2 because I think 80% of the value of the Concept 2 is the relationship to the Concept 2 company and their logbook and the logbook's connection to Strava and the fact that you can join challenges. Like right now I'm in doing the Fall Challenge and their challenges, both individual and team challenges. And maybe if we can get together as a posse, maybe I can create the Chris Abraham Show group on Facebook and we can all join there and then we can maybe create our own little boat and I will cheat on uh, the Potomac Boat Club and all of us uh, from team oh um, please if you're interested in this whole slow rowing thing go to reddit.com slash r slash slow rowing s-l-o-w-r-o-w-i-n-g and uh, join and uh, participate there. Uh, that's even better than a uh, Facebook group. Let me see if I can get the Reddit started. I am also going to, I'm the kind of guy who starts a stupid group uh, anyway. So I'm probably going to start a slow rowing group on Facebook and see what I can pull together. And I will talk to you soon. I appreciate you coming this far. I hope that if you're using this as a way of uh, lulling yourself to sleep out of my voice and boredom, I hope that you've fallen asleep minutes ago. And I look forward to episode four, um, sorry, season four, episode 21, uh, Bente Uno. And I'll talk to you later. Mahalo and I love you. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.